All right, we're back with part two. Uh, while in between part one and part two, I actually did one or two other things. Uh, it was mostly just uh, looking at the other variables, income, education, party ID, how often they attend religious services. Uh, and those ones are all pretty easy to take care of. There's some missing values in there, but nothing you haven't seen before. Uh, the next step, and what I've actually already started doing, we'll pick up right there, is because we're doing this through pull-down menus rather than typing up all the data, typing all the data is commands in, it's really difficult to find all of these variables in there. If you've been working with SPSS in the lab at all, you know that it's kind of a pain to find all these variables, especially when there's thousands of variables in there. So try and make this a little easier on ourselves since we're using the pull-down menus. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and actually move all of the variables to the very, very end. So, for instance, right now I'm looking for my party ID variable. So I'm just search for party ID. Actually, and you can see what we did was we actually take this variable. Once I find the variable, all I have to do is I click on the left side of it to highlight it, and I double click on the left side. Once I do that, I see that this comes up exactly where it is in my data view. All I have to do then to move it to the end, all I have to do is highlight it, and I'm going to press Control X. It was going to go away, and I can paste it right back where it was. Now the whole reason doing that party was R at the end, so there's no point in doing it for this party ID variable. But the point in doing this is to move all the variables I'm interested in right to here at the very end, so I can find them all really easily. Since so you already have my variable stats, white and black, those are arguing back here because I just created those. Newly created variables always go at the very end. But we also have age, which are moved back here, uh, sex, uh, the highest degree they've earned, family income, uh, and whenever dealing with income, I generally prefer to use family income rather than individual income. And the reason for that is that family income is a better indicator of social class in general. So if you're a stay-at-home husband and you don't make any money at all, but your wife makes $500,000 a year, well, you're pretty rich, even though your personal income would be very, very low. Uh, so we prefer to use family income. All right, so we've got all the variables up to party ID. I've got education, I've got income, I've got party ID. The last one I want to get in here is how often they attend religious services. So we go back to my variable view. Go up to the very top, all the way up, and just search and label for attend. How often do they attend religious services? The variable we found before. Close this out. And we see again, it's a reasonable variable. It goes from zero, never, up to eight, which is more than once a week. Nine is missing. Nines are set to missing, so we're good. So I'm just going to double click there. Up there, I can just go to cut. Or I could press Control X, I prefer the Control X, but I realize you can't see that. Press the end button, go all the way back here to the end, and paste. When you're doing this, be careful not to do any, anything in between those, because then you have a chance of losing that variable. Uh, if you lose that variable, there's nothing you can do. You're going to have to go back to the last time you saved. Uh, you can see right now we've got all the question marks. Those question marks are just telling me that it's processing it right now. Uh, once the numbers come back, then I can move on to the next step. Because it's such a giant data set, and because you see I've got a bunch of other programs running right now, uh, it's going to take a little while for it to process, but not a huge problem here. All right, so if I go through here, I see I've got marital status, my dummy for that, white and black, my dummies for race, uh, age, sex, education, income, party ID, and how often they attend religious services. So I only need to get, get one more variable from here. My dependent variable is going to be how often, uh, how they, their feeling thermometer towards Muslims. And we see right here, I just search for Muslims, and I get right down here, feeling thermometer towards Muslims. I like feeling thermometers, again, because they've got that 101 categories. Uh, because they have 101 categories, uh, it's, got a, it's got a broad range and works for a good dependent variable. Now, of course, we know that feeling thermometers are not actually uh, ratio-level variables like they are designed to look like. They're actually probably closer to interval-level variables with somewhere around 12 categories. Uh, but let's just pretend it makes our lives easier. So... Regardless, even if it's interval level variable, it can still work as a reasonable dependent variable. I see a missing values are negative 1, 998, 999. Those are already set to missing, so we're good. All I'm going to do is go copy this. You'll see I've got a lot of negative 1s here. Uh, this data set that I'm working here has a lot of, it has several years in it, I think six different uh, years. And so the question wasn't asked in every year. 
uh, doesn't affect as long as I was asked in some years. Okay, once I just paste it back over there at the end so I can get have easy access to it. Now, if you're ever worried about what exactly your deep, what exactly your dependent variable looks like, if it has actually enough categories uh, to work for your analysis, it's pretty easy to find out. All you have to do is go back over to Analyze. I'm going to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, and I can do the frequencies or descriptives. The difference here is frequencies is going to tell me about uh, the total number in each category. This is going to be worthwhile for variables that have very small number of categories, like race or gender. Things that have a small number of categories, the frequency is going to tell me how many are in each category. Uh, with my feeling thermometer, I know there's 101 categories, so I don't really want to bother with that. Instead, I'm going to go to descriptives. And this is some of my mean, median, and all of that, standard deviations. I run that, and you see, oh, yep, I've got 793 cases, go between 0 and 100 with a mean of 47.8. So it looks like we're okay. All right, once I've got that in there, the next thing we're going to do is create our interaction effect. So I'm going to go to transform, compute. Now remember in the past you're going to recode into different variables. We can't do that for the interaction effect. And the interaction effect I'm hypothesizing uh, is between party ID and how often they attend religious services. The idea being that essentially, I believe, Republicans who attend religious services a lot will be more anti-Muslim uh, than either Republicans or just people who attend religious services. Uh, so therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hypothesize that I've got a one-tailed I've got one tailed negative uh, effect of uh, the interaction of party ID, which is coded so higher is more Republican, and attend religious services, which is coded so higher is more religious, going to church more. So I'm going to transform compute variable, and this is going to be pretty easy. I'm just going to call it party ID x uh, attend. And again, it doesn't matter what you call as long as something you can remember. And I can just type the names of my variables in here, or go all the way down here, since I already put them here. Call off the attend religious services times party ID, because uh, the transitive property doesn't matter which order I put these in. Oh. All right, there we go. And OK. And I've created my interaction effect. So I've got all my independent variables. I've got my dependent variable. I've got an interaction effect. Let's go in and run the regression. So I'm going to go regression linear. And I've got my dependent variable. I've put these all together my independent variables, and I can actually just do a wee and do, uh, sorry, all of those together, all those independent variables. Now, I've got a lot of independent variables here. Question is, do I have so many I should go for a 99% confidence interval? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, yeah, they were at the threshold where it might make sense because the large number of variables for me to go ahead and do a 99% confidence interval. Uh, but for the purpose of just writing this right here, it's not going to matter. Just click OK. And just ran into a little bit of a problem uh, with the number with the uh, dependent variable uh, because that issue because that we had that issue with the uh, Muslims. Uh, still, you get the idea here. Uh, the problem there was actually part of my income variable using income 06, where the Muslims only asked enough for in different years. Regardless, I think you get the idea. And the idea here is that once we have all that in, it's going to be pretty easy. Just go to analyze. Regression, linear, throw all your variables in, click OK, and you've got it. Now, if you come back with a regression you don't like, your R squared is too low, uh, your interaction effect doesn't isn't significant. I do want a significant interaction effect so you have something to interpret. Then you're just going to want to go ahead, take out some variables, add some of the variables, and try again. So in this case, let's say that I didn't like the way this regression turned out. What I might do instead is go back, take out some variables, add some other variables in. So maybe think, all right, well. Uh, you know, maybe I'll just go do the same thing, except I'll take out my income variable, right? So I just go back, and I can take take out a variable, add a variable in, right? So say, okay, I don't need to have income and education, so let's just take out income, and we'll try this again, and see if I get uh, see if I like the results better. Well, what do I see? Well, my interaction effect here isn't significant, so I'd have to go back and create a different interaction effect. In fact, I don't have a whole lot of significant variables. I see that education is a significant predictor of how much they like care about how much they like Muslims. Uh, and of the other ones, gender is significant, but nothing else in here is significant. So, boy, what am I supposed to do with this? Well, again, what I'm going to go back is I'm going to go back and change my variables. So I see my interaction effect 
doesn't seem to be significant, nor does political party seem to be significant. So this is telling me maybe my best bet is to do an interaction effect that doesn't include party ID. So I can just go back and create another uh, interaction effect and say, all right, well, it looks like gender uh, is a significant predictor. So maybe I'm going to do with uh, gender by white. And whatever I want to do it with, again, it's going to be pretty easy to go back. Uh, and we'll do gender by attend. And go back and we. And I'll go back and put uh, sex in here. Okay, and I just create a new interaction effect. And again, I'm just going to go back until I get a regression that I'm happy with. Let's all throw it at the end. It's easy to find. Run the regression again. And we're getting a little closer. We're still not quite there. We're just going to play around until we find ones we like. So we do want to make sure we have a significant interaction effect. Uh, of course, make sure when you're looking for a significant interaction effect, make sure that all the components of your interaction effect are in fact present in the model. And also look at your R squared. As you right here, my R squared, boy, it's pretty low. I've got an R squared of 0.04. So that's going to be too low. That's telling me I'm not really explaining very much. I'm explaining only 3.5% of the total variance of my dependent variable. So I'm going to want to go in and probably add some other add some other independent variables until I get a high enough R squared that looks like I'm really interpreting something. And really, the threshold we're looking for that is somewhere around an R squared of 0.15. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more variables in, take some variables out, uh, see if I can make this work. Uh, however, you now have seen exactly what you need to do, so uh, good luck, and I'll see your, all your papers next week.